Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Good morning and welcome to our All Around the Altar service this morning where we will be considering what it means to live with Jesus as we consider the illustration of the vine and the branches Jesus has given us in John chapter 15. I hope you'll have received the templates by email or post as Cheryl will be inviting you to use these during our prayer activity this morning. If you haven't received the template then don't worry, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil and you'll be ready for our prayer activity when it comes along. We'll begin the service this morning by lighting our three candles welcoming God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit to meet with us this morning. You may like to have three candles at home ready to light as Kirk and his family lead us. I will light a light in the name of the Maker who lit the world and gave everything life. I will light a light in the name of the Son who saved the world and stretched out his hand to me. I will light a light in the name of the Spirit, who is present everywhere in the world and gives me strength. We will light three lights for the trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, and the everlasting one. Amen. Our first song this morning is called Dollop, all about God's great love and how we're called to praise and worship him. So feel free to get on your feet and sing and dance your praises to God. I don't just get a dollar for a spot, your tiny little drop of God's love, God's love. How cool that I get it all Like a mighty waterfall Splashing all over me Don't just get a dollar for a spot You're a tiny little drop of God's love God's love How cool that I get it all Like a mighty waterfall Splashing all over me I don't get less If I make a mess I never get less Than this very, very best This love for me Is totally free And nothing I can be able to so raise him with your hands in the air now, praise him with dancing feet now, praise him with your hands, let's clap now. Praise him with your whole body in now, praise him with your voice, let's shout, shout, praise him, everybody go praise the Lord. Dollar for a spout, you're a tiny little drop of God's love, God's love. How cool that I get it all, like a mighty waterfall splashing all over me. I don't just get a dollar for a spout, you're a tiny little drop of God's love, God's love. How cool that I get it all, like a mighty waterfall splashing all over me. I don't get less if I make a mess, I never get less than this very, very best. His love for Totally free, and nothing I can be able to earn it. So praise Him with your hands in the air now. Praise Him with dancing feet now. Praise Him with your hands, let's clap now. Praise Him with your whole body in now. Praise Him with your voice, let's shout, shout. Praise Him, everybody come praise the Lord. So praise Him with your hands in the air now Praise Him with dancing feet now Praise Him 
With your hands, let's clap now. Praise Him with your whole body in our praise Him. With your voice, let's shout, shout, praise Him. Everybody come praise the Lord. Hey there, awesome Andy. It's really good to see you. Oh, I have a question for you. Do you like fruit? Oh, yes, Jenny. I love fruit. Apples, bananas, oranges, and especially grapes. I love grapes. Well, that is rather fortunate. You see, I have this bowl of grapes. Oh, freshly washed grapes like the ones we give to our children in communion. Oh, would you like one? Don't mind if I do. Here we go. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, delicious. Thanks, Jenny. Oh, you're very welcome. That fruit was picked from a healthy vine, a bit like a bush, where it had been slowly growing and developing into this wonderful fruit, and it took several months to make. Delicious, aren't they? Would you like another one? Here we go. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Great. Now, look at this branch. Look at that branch. Do you think I might get some delicious fruit growing on a branch like this later in the year? Well, it doesn't look very healthy, Jenny. It's all brown and, well, I can't see that producing any grapes at all. No. Oh. So why do you think that then, Andy? Well, you see, it's not attached to the bush anymore, so it won't get all it needs to grow fruit. In fact, it looks pretty dead to me. Yeah, I think you're right. Sad, isn't it? Oh dear, we all know that branches need to be joined. Joined to the main bush if they're going to grow and produce good fruit. And in fact, <laughs> they've got to be joined if they want to grow at all, really, don't they? <laughs> but did you know, awesome Andy, that, that Jesus wants us to grow, grow fruit? Do you mean he wants us to grow apples? And pears and grapes oh, no no the good fruit jesus wants us to grow is becoming more like him jesus wants to grow good fruit of, of love and kindness and generosity and, and faithfulness and goodness and patience and forgiveness and joy and peace that kind of fruit that is good fruit jenny how do we grow this kind of fruit well you see jesus says you stay close to him and he will grow this wonderful fruit in us. But I wonder, how do you stay close to Jesus, Andy? Well, you know, Jenny, that's easy. It's not complicated at all. I just talk to him, you know, and share what's happening in my life with him. Mm. As I pray, and I listen to him, and as I read my Bible, and then I do the things that he asks us to do. Wow. Sounds like you are well attached to Jesus. It's the best place to be. Absolutely the best place. Oh, you're right. That is just awesome. And I reckon you're going to be growing some pretty good fruit in you and also, Andy. Thank you so much for helping. Um, we're going to have our Bible reading now. And I think the boys and girls are, are sure to know exactly what Jesus is talking about now. Yeah. Thanks ever so much, awesome, Andy. We're going to have our Bible reading now. Bye. Bye. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they can produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is served from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for our reading. So today we're looking at the story of Jesus and the vine. 
you should have received some colouring pages uh, of grapes and vines and branches uh, for the prayer activity that Cheryl will be bringing us shortly. So make sure you have them handy or grab yourself some paper and some colouring pens or pencils. So Jesus and the vine. This is the last of the I am sayings as recorded in the book of John. Jesus says, I am. I am the bread of life in John chapter 6. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never get thirsty. Jesus says, I am the light of the world in John 8. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says, I am the gate in John 10. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And then he says, I am the good shepherd. Uh, later in the same chapter, as we heard from Brian last week. And then Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. In John 11, whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. In John 14, no one comes to the Father except through me. Why does Jesus say no one comes to the Father except through me? Because as he says later, I and the Father are one. Jesus is God. Jesus is the great I am. What do I mean by that? When Moses asked God at the burning bush in Exodus 3 in the Old Testament, who shall I say you are? God said, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. You see, I am is the name for God. And here in John, Jesus is saying, I am. I am the great I am. I am God. Jesus and God are one. So as we read through the book of John, we are getting used to Jesus' teaching. And here he says, I am the vine. Fantastic. Jesus is the one who will grow fruit in us. And we'll hear more about that shortly. Uh, but it's actually recorded in the book of John that he says, I am the true vine. And this is important. Why does Jesus say that he is the true vine? Well, we need to go to the Old Testament to find out because there are frequent references in the Old Testament to vineyards where vines are grown. And the vineyard is actually a metaphor for something else. It means it's something else. And that is, do you know, the vineyard is a metaphor for Israel, for the Jewish people. So let me take you back to the ancient book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5 says this, I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. Keep in mind that this is about the Jewish people of Israel. My loved one had a vineyard on fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Those people who read the book of John for the first time, those people who were early followers of Jesus would have absolutely understood the reference to the vineyard meaning the Jewish people. You see, God did everything for his chosen people. He tended them. It says he took out the hard rocks. He made the way to God that was easy and straight. But what did they do? Well, let's read on in Isaiah. What more could have been done for my vineyard, he says, that I have done for it. When I look for good grapes, why did they only yield bad ones? So God made this wonderful vineyard for the Israelites to live. 
And what did they do? They just messed it up again and again. They turned away from God. They failed to stay close to God. But here in the New Testament, Jesus is saying, I am the true vine. Not just any old vine, but the true vine. Jesus will enable the vineyard to produce fruit that it was meant to be produced. God is going to produce good people that he always wanted to have. And he's going to produce them through Jesus. And although, as we know, God came first to the Jews, to the Israelites, he is now speaking to all of us. So Jesus came that we can all produce good fruit if we remain in him. So far, so good. Verse 1 promises us that Jesus is God. And more than that, that he is for us. And then we come to verse 2 which says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he the NIV says he cuts it off and other translations says he takes it away I always find this a tricky verse it makes quite uncomfortable reading it says every branch in me in other words He's implying that every believer, so every believer that doesn't bear fruit will be cut off and thrown away. And that doesn't sound quite right. We've already heard in John 11 that whoever believes in Jesus will never die. So surely we can't be cut off from Jesus if we believe in him. Romans 8 verse 32 says nothing, nothing can separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus. So, is there an error in the Bible here? Is the Bible wrong? If the Bible is truly God-breathed as we believe, then there can be no errors, no contradictions. The Bible is always right and true. Well, something really strange happened to me as I was grappling with this. I started to type my thoughts about verse 2 on my computer and as I did, well, I, then I looked up on the screen because I can't touch type, I can't type and look at the screen at the same time. But as I looked up, what was on the screen was in Greek, not in English. I have no idea how that happened. It was so strange. So I thought, I probably need to take this seriously. And so I looked up my Greek Bible on, on the computer and this verse and something in it I found quite remarkable. The word cut off or taken away is the Greek word aero. If I can find it, here we are. Aero. No, not the chocolate bar. The same word is used in Matthew 4 verse 6 to mean bear up. Or in Matthew 6, so at Matthew 9 verse 6, uh, Jesus says, pick up your bed and walk. That's arrow. And Matthew 16, Jesus arrowed his cross. He picked it up. He didn't throw it away or cut it off. So this word arrow can also be translated to lift up. And that completely changes this passage. So I decided to look up how vines were grown in ancient times and maybe that could help. Because back then they weren't like the tree-like structures we have today, but they grew along the ground. And they still do in Lanzarote, which is where this picture comes from. So I reckon this parable suggests that those who were in Christ but were not bearing fruit were like the vines that were growing along the ground and perhaps got a bit trampled on or waterlogged or damaged. And Jesus is saying here that those who know Jesus, those who are in Jesus but are struggling, are lifted up or raised up. You see, vines that weren't flourishing on the ground were indeed raised up and put on rocks 
or trellises. Jesus cares for those who are struggling. He doesn't throw them away. Now that makes more sense. That reflects the Jesus I know. Okay, and then we come to the second half of verse 2. And it says, Jesus prunes. Every branch that doesn't bear fruit, he prunes. Oh, that doesn't sound much fun either, does it? Even if you're growing in Jesus, even if you're developing as a disciple, Jesus still prunes. So, aha, I thought I would look up the Greek for pruning. And the Greek for pruning is pruning. There's no getting away from this one. I'm no gardener. But I was thinking about uh, a plant we used to have in our old house called a buddleia. Now then, if we cut the buddleia down um, after it had flowered, then the next year the plant would go completely bananas, produce an amazing amount of growth and produce some spectacular flowers that the butterflies and the bees would absolutely love. But if we forgot to prune it and just left it, it would get hard and woody and the flowering was nowhere near as spe spectacular. Cutting out the old growth can really help to reinvigorate the plant. And it's like, like that with us. Jesus wants to take away the old growth that inhibits us from being fruitful. The old habits, the old ways, ways in which we can get comfortable resting back in what we know we can do ourselves without God's help. Thank you very much. So I think we do all need a bit of pruning now and again. Doing things in our own strength is not great. Jesus says we need to do things in his strength and not on our own. We need to be attached to him. Do you remember that, that saying from, from Philippians 4? The I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it says here, apart from Christ, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things. So it is from Jesus that we grow fruit. And if we don't abide in Jesus, if we don't stay close to Jesus, then you cannot bear fruit. You connect to me, Jesus says, and he produces the fruit. It's not about us struggling and getting on and doing stuff. It's about being close to Jesus and being with Jesus. And what is this, this fruit? Well, we've heard it from author Mandy already, haven't we? The fruit John is speaking about is almost certainly the fruit of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And who doesn't need more of all of these? Jesus says, remain in me, and I also remain in you. You cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me, and you will bear much fruit. When we get on to verse 6 in our reading, we see that those who don't believe in Jesus, those who reject him and his teaching, well, they don't fare so well. But those who remain in Jesus, those who believe in Jesus, he goes on to say, we can ask whatever we wish. Wow. Matthew 7 says similar things. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks will find. The one who knocks, the door will be open. <laughs> Life with Jesus is amazing. Not always easy, as the pruning suggests, but as we abide in him, as we spend time with him, as awesome Andy says, it's not complicated at all. We just need to talk to him. Uh, we need to share what's happening in our life. We need to read the Bible. We need to pray and listen to him. And then we need to find out what he wants us to do and get on and do that. And we will have more. 
we will have more love, more joy, more peace, more fullness of life. So today, let us thank God for Jesus, the great I am. And let's commit, let's make a promise to spend more time with him each day. And as we reflect on this, Andrea is going to sing us a song, Jesus Be the Centre. And perhaps you could join in and sing along as a sign that you want Jesus to be at the very centre of your life. Thank you, Andrea. acknowledged in our service this morning that if we're going to bear good fruit of the Holy Spirit we need to stay connected to Jesus and spend time with him and prayer is a way of spending time and being connected to him. So we've got a prayer activity that we're going to join in together this morning and in our relationships both with our members of our families or our friends or our neighbours we need to give them time to get to know them don't we? And there are lots of ways to stay connected with people. We might speak to them face to face. Uh, we might chat with them on the telephone. We might use social media or send a text or an email. Um, and one of the gifts that we have been given to stay connected to Jesus is the gift of prayer. And our prayers connect us with Jesus and with each other. Now, we all get excited, don't we, to be connected with each other and why we can't do that at the moment physically in our all around the altar services, we're going to be connected together this morning through the power of Jesus and prayer. Now, I'm hoping that you have been able to either download um, uh, these sheets or that you've been sent them in the post and we're going to be using them in our prayer time this morning. And on these sheets, you'll find a picture of the branches with leaves and a picture of a bunch of grapes. And as we come together to pray this morning, we're going to use these images. We're going to colour them and place names on them. 
please keep hold of your pictures when we finish this morning and place them in your home to remind you to pray for these people and for each other and still continue to keep hold of them because when we get back into church physically we want to be able to create a collage of the different parts of the vine and the branches uh, symbolising our connectiveness together through Jesus Christ. Um, I've also printed some prayers underneath the images which uh, will help you to pray um, and respond um, in our prayer time this morning and then we'll join together at the end by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So I'm going to start off with the uh, vine and the branches and uh, I'll show you um, how I'm going to do mine and you might like to do something similar or you might like to do it in your own way but using the prayers on the sheet as a prompt and a guide. As you can see I have taken my vine picture and you'll see that I have written Jesus's name down the vine a couple of times to help me reminder that he is indeed the vine that helps me stay connected to God and to other people. I've placed my name on one of the leaves. And now's the time to pray and to colour to use the prompts and responses that are printed here below. And we pray that as Jesus followers, we will stay connected to him. Jesus, you are the vine. Help us stay connected to you. As you colour the rest of your picture, Pray for Jesus to be with people from our fellowship and community who are sick or going through other hard times. Jesus, you are the vine. Help them stay connected to you. Father, we pray for people in our communities, for family and friends who do not know you yet. Jesus, you are the vine. Help them become connected to you. And as you continue to colour and to pray, Think about those people who have influ influenced your faith journey and those people who you influence on their faith journey and pray that we stay connected to Jesus. As we continue in our prayer time, you might want to, to move on to the bunch of grapes and to place your name on one of the grapes. Father, we pray that as Jesus followers, we will stay connected to you. Let's say together, Jesus, you are the vine. Help us to stay connected to you. Then continue to pray and to play, pray for people that you know and that you are connected with. People from our fellowship, from our community, from our families. As you continue to colour and place people's names on grapes. Once again use the prompts and say together Jesus you are the vine. Help them to stay connected to you. You may need to pause 
your video during the prayer time to spend those moments, precious moments in prayer of praying for these people that you place on your grapes. As we draw our prayer time to a close this morning, I hope you've enjoyed, as I said, those precious moments of being in God's presence and thinking about how we ourselves are connected to Jesus and those that are around us that we know and love are connected with Jesus too. So use these in your homes over the next couple of weeks to think about that connectivity of being able to bear good fruit of the Holy Spirit by being connected with Jesus. And then when we gather together back physically within our church, we will be able to make a collage together of our names of the people that we love and that connectivity of Jesus through the example of the vine and the branches. So let us finish our prayer time together this morning with the Lord's Prayer, uniting ourselves with other church members and family members and other Christians around the world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we remember those that have a birthday this month. Do you have a birthday in May? If you do, we wish you a very, very happy birthday. And now we're going to sing or say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. May God's richest blessings be showered on you. And now we sing our final song, which is Let Everything That Has Breath Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let 
Now, please join in the grace with actions. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And now we move on to our closing responses. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To make this world look more like your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on. So watch out for our service where we can all be together and bring our vines, leaves and grapes into church to represent that we're all part of an amazing family, all connected together and held together by Jesus. So make sure you keep them somewhere safe. Have a blessed week. Oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy name.